is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Black Fox. We are Minnesota. The Twins are back home in Minneapolis tonight after a six game road trip to New York and Chicago on a perfect night for baseball. The Twins are at Target Field welcoming baseball's hottest team the first place Texas Rangers for the opening game of this three game series. Brian Dozier riding an 11 game streak with extra base hits in each one of them. His 12 game hit streak overall has pushed his average up. Not as high as Kurt Suzuki's, who sits at a season high 280 after a 377 stretch in his last 21. On the other side, Ian Desmond leads the Rangers with 59 runs. He's on pace for a career high in that department, fifth best in the American League. And nobody drives him in more efficiently than Adrian Beltre. 52 runs batted in already on the season for Beltre. Tonight, the Twins get a boost as Miguel Sano is back in the lineup, returning from the disabled list after missing a month. Welcome to Target Field, a perfect night for baseball here between the Twins and the Rangers. And Minnesota, as mentioned, will get Miguel Sano back in the lineup as we take a look at some of the keys for this series between the Twins and the Rangers. Sano back, hasn't played since May 31st. Young Hope Park, the odd man out, he's option to AAA. Park showed signs of power throughout the season, but hit just 123 over his last 30 games. Sano returns to a Minnesota lineup that has been flexing their muscles a bit lately. 36 home runs in the month of June, 12th most in all of baseball, included in there the six homer game in New York against the Yankees. They'll face a Ranger club that is heating up. Texas 51 and 29, best record in the American League. Only the Cubs can top their win percentage. But the Rangers come in a bit ornery. They've lost each of their last two. They dropped the last two games of the series in New York against the Yankees, each in dramatic fashion. So Texas comes in here trying to snap a two game losing streak as they face the Twins at Target Field where the Rangers have won nine of the last 14 head to head meetings. Twins and the Rangers at Target Field tonight. Urban Santana will go to the mound, but all eyes on Miguel Sano, who's back in the lineup for the Twins tonight.
Baseball on Fox Sports North is presented by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine for the everyday competitor in all of us. Man, what a beautiful night for a ball game in Minneapolis. The opening game of a three game series between the Rangers and the Twins. And the good news, the big man is back. Miguel Sano didn't play with the Twins at all in the month of June. Now with the turn of the calendar page, Miguel Sano is back in the lineup at third base for the Minnesota Twins. Dick Bramer along with Jack Morris for the opening game of this three game series. And the Twins did not have a good month of June to be sure, but the lineup showed some signs of life and now they get their big hitter back. Yeah, and Miguel Sano is hitting the ball so well before the injury and everybody's hoping that maybe within a short period of time he can return to that kind of form. He definitely <clears throat> draws attention when he's at the plate and everybody knows that for a young guy he's the go to guy for the Twins. He needs to stay hot and uh, get right back of the swing of things per se. And the Twins will uh, enjoy having that big bat in the middle of the lineup. We'll see whether it has any carryover effect to the guys in front and behind him in the lineup. He is playing third base tonight for the Twins. He'll be facing left hander Martin Perez of the Texas Rangers and Irvin Santana will start for the Minnesota Twins. welcomes Warshad. Deep to left field. A towering blast. In less than one season, he's owned the 60 feet 6 inches between rubber and result. With grit over glitter, muscle over grace, purpose over polish. A drive to left center field. The legend continues. I didn't think a human being could hit a baseball that far. We watch. We stare and we talk. I don't think anybody's close to Sano's power. A uh, beast of a man. Very loud when it comes off his bat. There's a lot to say and there's a lot to see about Miguel Sano. And he is back in the Twins lineup and back at third base and hitting third tonight as the Twins get their first look at the best team in the American League through the first half, the Texas Rangers. They will finish their mathematical first half with their 81st game here tonight and they have been quite a story with 51 wins already the Menards batting order for Jeff Bannister and the Rangers Shinsu Chu Ian Desmond had a fantastic first year with the Rangers Nomar Mazzara a rookie very likely the rookie of the year winner won't come season's end 
Adrian Beltre, Prince Fielder, Rubnet Odor, Elvis Andres, Mitch Moreland, and Bobby Wilson. And they will be facing the right hander, Urban Santana, making his 15th start. He has a winning career mark against the Rangers. 13 11 and 31 starts tonight will be his 31st. One and four here at Target Field tonight, and he needs to get off to a good start. Now we're waiting for the music to uh, die, and <laughs> finally, home plate umpire Bob Davidson says, All right, let's play ball. Shinsu Chu will lead things off. Strike one, and while this is the first game uh, the Twins and Rangers will play, we'll see a lot of them in the next two weekends. Bob Davidson, the old UMD Bulldog, Lance Barrett, Dan Isonia, Dale Scott, the rest of the umpires. Three games this weekend between the two teams, and then next weekend in Texas, leading up to the All Star break, a four game series. They're going to have to play good ball. They're going to see a, a team that doesn't necessarily do any aspect of the game great, but they do a lot of it very well. Mm -hmm. And thus the winning record. Two and one to Shinsu Chu. Chu's been injured for a good chunk of the first half of the season. Swing and a miss, two and two. Just 81 at bats. But a veteran, a good high on base percentage guy with a lot of walks. Outside three and two. If the Twins are going to be better in July than they were in June, their starting pitching needs to be better. Irvin Santana needs to be better than he was in June. Irvin came off a very good start of the first series, the first game against New York, and then backed it up as he gives the leadoff walk to Chu with a so so start, his second start against New York. But you're absolutely right. Well, there's what's going on in Texas right there. And they've got a lot of things going their way right now. Third most in the American League with runs scored. This guy came over from the Washington Nationals. Nobody expected him to do what he's doing. And they've got a bunch of guys banged up on the mound. Darvish, uh, probably the best of that group, and uh, he came up with a little sickness his last time, so they're giving him some extra time. May and pitch in Texas against the Twins. And the guy that really has uh, emerged, uh, not just on the field, but in the clubhouse as a leader for this Ranger team, Ian Desmond, former uh, shortstop with the Nationals, and converted to first a left fielder, now a center fielder. And they say that he has taken to the outfield yeah. very, very well. They, they say he's just a tremendous athlete, and thus, Making very good routes uh, defensively, getting to the ball. When he signed with the Rangers. He told people that he was going to embrace going to the outfield. He was going to uh, hopefully take to it like Alex Gordon did. Gordon, of course, a third well, baseman struggling in his career with the Royals. He went out to left field and looked like he'd be played out there his whole life. Yeah, won a few gold gloves, and Desmond might have one of those in the future. One and one. Throw to first. Santana back to back starts against the Yankees, and they both were okay. Picked up a win here against the Yankees, seven and a third inning, six hits, just a couple of earned runs. And now outside, two and one. And then a five inning start, and 102 pitches over five innings. Santana, you may remember, threw an awful lot of pitches in the first inning and then was never able to really recover from that. And that's what he wants to avoid here tonight against the Rangers. Well, he needs a double play ball, is what he needs. Two and two. He's gotten 11 of those so far on the season. Northland Fort defense for the Twins. And with Sano's addition to the lineup, the outfield stays the same. Grossman, Buxton, and Kepler. Sano at third, Fluff DHing. Nunez, Dozier up the middle, Mauer at first, and Suzuki behind the plate. Two and two to Desmond. Got him on the inside corner. Good pitch by Irvin Santana, and a strikeout of Desmond for the first out. 
Well, after a leadoff walk, he comes back to get Desmond on a fastball looking, I believe. We'll take another look at it here. This is the last pitch. And yeah, he just kind of locks him up. Fox Tracks had it a lot lower and more in than my eyeballs had it. Looked like it was a better pitch than that. One down and now Nomar Mazzara. Zara having a very solid rookie season. Originally, the Lino De Shields Jr. was in the outfield mix and he struggled. Chu got hurt. Mazzara was called up, and when Chu got better, it was De Shields who was the odd man out in the outfield, not Mazzara because of his numbers. 287, 11, 35. That's a pretty good first half for a rookie. Down and away ball one. One it, and one. It seems like the blueprint for successful teams is just that good mix of veteran leadership and veterans who still have some ability level left that can contribute, like an Adrian Beltre. And then the young kid that comes in that maybe people didn't really anticipate being that good, but has that breakout kind of year as a youngster. And you know, they start feeding off each other I think the youth and the veterans uh, you know maybe a right punch to the jaw of one of the best players in the game and all of a sudden they start believing go to first well that's kind of what happened I always felt with Chuck Knobloch on your 91 mm -hmm. twins team uh, up and down the lineup almost all of the veterans Scotty Leyes I guess was a relatively inexperienced player but Pally Rulo Herbeck Puckett all those guys and then the rookie is able to come in and not put too much pressure on himself and develop. There's a base hit to center for Mazzara, first and second one down. Let's take a look at uh, Urban Santana's last two starts, both against the Yankees. This was back on June 19th. He pitched seven to third innings of six hit baseball, picked up the win. That was his second win of the year. And then his last start, a no decision, but he pitched five innings, and like Dick just mentioned, it, it started out with a high pitch count early. And that's why he didn't get as deep into the game as they might have liked him to. And now the ageless Adrian Beltre. Down and away, ball one. Beltre is only 37 years old. But he has given off the impression that he's been here forever. He broke in with the Dodgers in 1998. And there's a lot left in the tank. Inside two and zero. Oh. Well, when you think about Ichiro Suzuki at 42, and the fact that he's still being as productive as he is, you know this guy has always stayed in great shape. He's got tremendous hands at third base, a, a you know one of the best defensive third basemen in all of baseball. And as long as he can stay healthy, he's had some back issues, but uh, he's a pro. Some thought as far back as 2009. That he was uh, fading into the sunset, if you will. In his last year with Seattle, he hit 265, had some injury issues, hit only eight home runs, and 44 runs batted in. And uh, you know, here we are, seven years later, he's still going strong, two and two. Well, one of the things I think, if you talk to anybody associated with the Texas Rangers, you know that he is the voice in the clubhouse. He's what makes this team roll. He's uh, just has that respect amongst his teammates, and he plays the game the right way. To right field, Kepler comes in, makes the catch. That's out number two. And that'll bring up Prince Fielder. Fielder got, has gotten off to a very uh, slow start this year, but he's picked up uh, the swinging a little bit later or uh, lately. And an 11 game hitting streak broken on Thursday. The Rangers came into New York as the Twins were leaving. They had a four game series, and it was, to say the least, an interesting series. One of the games ended after 2 o'clock in the morning because of rain, a rain delay of more than three hours. The Rangers won the first two, the Yankees won the final two. And over the course of that series, Fielder extended a hitting streak to 11 games only to have it snapped yesterday. Chopped toward first and foul, one strike. 
Well you're right, right on with Prince his average not what we're accustomed to seeing with Prince although you can see by that stat in the last 10 games he's done a lot better job only seven home runs on the year and that is not really characteristic what he can do but with those seven home runs 41 RBI and that with a couple good weeks uh, he, he easily could get his hundred RBI so Prince is uh, is a guy that's been pretty darn durable over the years relegated to DH duties now one and one. Rangers have been a very good clutch hitting team this year. They've got runners at first and second with two down. And now two and one. Santana struggling. Yeah, pitch throwing uh, strikes. Pitch 23 pitches, climbing. just 11 strikes. Now sometimes that's the first inning, second inning, toughest innings for a lot of starting pitchers to get the feel, get in the rhythm that they're used to, and then things can settle in. But Got to be ready for that first pitch. Fly ball left field corner. Grossman in the corner. Squeezes it. The inning ends. A leadoff walk and a single. Two men left aboard in a scoreless first for Irvin Santana. Miguel Sano back in the lineup, hoping that the Twins can put together a winning month of July. Had a, a good uh, season series against the West so far, mainly the Seattle Mariners. Here's the Menard batting order: Nunez leading off, Joe Mauer batting second, Miguel Sano third, then Dozier, Bluff, and Grossman, Kepler, Suzuki, and Buxton. And they'll be facing 25-year-old left-hander Martin Perez. He's making his Team I-17 start tonight. He's kind of kind of on a little bit of a roll right now looking for his seventh win in a row. He's on a six game winning streak. But during that streak his team has given him a whole bunch of run support <laughs> seven point eight seven runs per nine innings. He's also the kind of guy that walks a few doesn't strike out that many but he gets a lot of ground ball double plays. Nineteen of them yep. told you about Santana getting eleven and that's a decent number. But uh, Perez leads the league with nineteen ground ball double plays. Just delivered strike one to Nunez. And now ball lifted down the right field line, and Chu's got a long run, but it's a foul ball. Nice catch by the fan in the royal blue there. Well, he's got. We're talking about Martin Perez. He's got pretty good stuff. He can he can top out in the mid 90s with his fastball. He's got a good over the top breaking ball and a slider. He will change speeds, but <laughs> what they say he's got. The ability to do is is go up and down in the strike zone. He'll throw the four seam fastball up in the zone, and he'll throw that sinking fastball down in the zone. So, pretty good combination from the left side. Two strikes, and Nunez takes inside. That's being ready for the first foul ball. You guys <laughs> on the field, you have to be ready on the first pitch. As a fan, that guy was ready for the first foul ball. It's good to see they're paying attention. <laughs> One and two. Missed a little bit low, two and two. Twins haven't seen much of Perez. Evansville, if that's Evansville, Minnesota, I know right where that's at. 
How many times play Evansville? No, never played him. No. Chopper to third. Beltre juggles it, doesn't panic, and throws low. Scooped by Moreland, one away. I don't know how many times in his career we've seen Adrian Beltre put that big chest and use those hands, knock the ball down, pick it up, like you mentioned. No panic and makes a play. The uh, Northland Ford defense for the Rangers Mazzara in left, Desmond in center, Chu in right, Beltre and Andres, Odor and Moreland with Bobby Wilson behind the plate. There's Adrian Beltre just knocking the ball down. It was hit pretty sharply. And typically shows off a lot stronger arm than that. Good job by Moreland to pick it and help out on the other end. There's Joe Maurer and there's strike one. I've always thought that Beltre's delivery of throws across the diamond reminded me at least of Gary Gaetti. Gary Gaetti had almost kind of a sidearm whip on his throws across the diamond. Here's a ball to the left field corner. And a foul ball and a sliding attempt by Mazzara, and he's okay. Two strikes. Take another look at Mazzara's effort over there. He knows that he's coming close to that wall, so he goes into a slide and actually bumps into it. Tough play for an outfielder to try to make right there. Two strikes to Maurer. Tapper to second. Easy play for Odor. Two down. So batting third for the Twins. Third baseman number 22, Miguel Sano. Sano was on a rehab assignment. Ended up getting 25 at bats for Rochester, hit only 160, but did hit a couple of home runs. Spent most of his time at third base. He DH'd one game up two games and played in right field one game. You know, I've never really talked to any hitters who have had the leg injuries like Snell with the, with the hamstring about the rehab and how it affects your timing at the plate. Back to strike. I got to believe it. It has an effect that is a little bit more common than say an oblique or or something in your upper body because you use your legs so much and you know timing and everything to hold your body back when you're taking pitches and being able to drive when you're going after a pitch inside one or two. But certainly Miguel Sano is going to have a little bit of adjustment again with his timing. He hadn't quite got there at the AAA level. Doesn't mean he's not ready to explode. Yeah, I don't know that anybody was too concerned about the uh, no. batting average. Uh, I was uh, kind of interested to find out he grounded into two double plays, which remember it was a double play right. where he injured the hamstring in the first place, beating it out, getting a run batted in, and so he was able to run down the line number of times and no issues with the hamstring and all that said the twins all have all but decided that his days running around in the gap in right field are probably behind him he figures to see a lot of time both in the DH spot and at third base and we'll see if there's more time for him in the outfield or not down the line and hooking foul well, I remember last year you know when he came up uh, he had a little bit of a leg issue and they told him not don't don't run as hard you know just take it easy going down to first base if it's a an out or assumed out you know don't try to push yourself and I just wonder if he's going to be a little cautious doing that now that he's back in the big leagues two and two at least to start what they'd like to see in the final three months and some change is about 20 home run trots yeah you don't have to run hard when, you, <laughs> when you're just uh, Jogging around the base pass. It was 0 and 2, a whole bunch of two strike fouls, and now it's 2 and 2. Got him down and in. A strikeout and a 1 2 3 first for Martin Perez.
Baseball on Fox Sports North is presented by CenturyLink. Switch to CenturyLink Prism TV for an advanced TV experience. Learn more at cprismtv.com. And by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Dick Bramer and Jack Morris bringing you the opener between the Twins and the Rangers. Day games tomorrow and Sunday. And then the Oakland A's come to town. Then we go to Texas for four games. One strike with Santana getting ahead of Rupnad Odor. Tapped up the line. Foul two strikes. Well, Santana coming out this half inning and throwing strikes. He did walk the leadoff man in the first inning. Pitch count kind of started climbing, but seems to be in a little better rhythm here again. Now is the start the second inning. Blocked by Suzuki, one and two. Odor achieving cult figure status. <laughs> Far out of the great state of Texas. Well, I think they all know him in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of hockey fans up there that liked his right hand. Popped up left side, only one infielder there. Nunez retreating. Grossman coming in. And Grossman calls him off, one away. With one down in the second, let's find Marty Gilman. With the Twins activating Miguel Sano today, they also optioned Byung Ho Park to AAA Rochester. Paul Molitor said that you could really see the frustration building mentally for Park, especially over the past three to four weeks. And he said that the Twins want Park to go to Rochester to lessen the burden and clear some of the clutter in his mind. And Molitor said what he told Park was to simplify things, to go back to what he knows and to make subtle adjustments, but to not overhaul anything, to get himself back on track. And Dick and Jack Molitor said the Twins, everyone up here still believes that Park's swing will be effective up here. Well, thank you, Marty. Yeah, it became apparent it just was such a mental block for him just to have uh, a competitive at bat. All the at bats tended to look the same toward the end. One strike. And now a ball line foul off the bat of Andres. Two strikes. I, I talked to Paul Molitor in the last homestand about Young Ho Park. And he said, you know, it's just a tough thing when you start becoming a guess hitter. And he was guessing and really committing to pitches that weren't even close to being out of the hand. He was starting to think about uh, getting beat with that fastball. And uh, not being able to adjust, and I, I, I asked him. I said, "Is something that you can teach a kid to track the ball, to see the ball again?" He goes, "You know, once he figures that out, he'll start swinging and hitting the ball again." Liner hit to Dozier, out number two. And that'll bring up Moreland. August 9th is North Dakota State University night at Target Field. A limited number of NDSU theme night ticket packages. Are available that include a game ticket and green and white twins cap. You can learn more at twinsbaseball.com slash NDSU or call 800 33 twins. It's UND night here. There's the caps that were handed out to those with the special ticket packages. Outside ball one, Mitch Moreland the batter. I'm kind of excited about. Uh, the promotions are doing with our friends across the border. Some of our, you know this as well as I, Dick, all the years we've been oh, man. going on caravan. Some of the best Twins fans we have in this great Twins territory are in the Dakotas and North Dakota. When we go to the Fargo area, is just always full of knowledgeable fans. One and one to Mitch Moreland. Two and one. We talked about Santana's rough first inning last time, and he struggled a little bit here with the opening walk and all that. Uh, Brad Radke was that way, but I don't recall you ever having any first inning issues. I did when I was young. You know, I think it was something that I had to work on. I think all pitchers have to work on it. Two and two. You uh, you have a different feel on the bullpen mound than you do on the field mound, and sometimes. You know, you're only supposed to throw X amount of pitches. I don't know if it's seven. I can't even remember. So, you know, sometimes I just try to get in an extra one or two and get a feel for the angle. You know, they're supposed to be all identical, but the reality is the depth perception, all the things that you see are different. On the ground, one hop skipper, 
to Maurer in a one two three second for Urban Santana. Brian Dozier will lead off the twins half of the second inning. Staying in the cleanup spot after the return to the lineup of Miguel Sano tonight. It'll be Dozier, Plouffe, and Grossman. Quite a streak for Brian Dozier, as we mentioned in Chicago. I think I'm like a lot of baseball fans. I don't pay a whole lot of attention to a hitting streak until it gets to double digits, 10 games or so. And then you figure, well, all right, well, 11 games in a row now with an extra base hit. Well, that, that's pretty remarkable. It doesn't happen every day. Or every week. Popped up left side. Beltre, Andres. And Andres with the catch. One away. And that'll bring up Loop, but here's a look at the last 11 games for Brian Dozier. Doubles, home runs, even a couple of triples. Well, he's definitely putting the barrel of the bat on the ball more often. I think he's starting to have the ability to. To hit the pitches that he used to and was while he was swinging good last year, a hit. I think he struggled with that in the first couple months of the season, but now Brian Dozier's got a little more confidence than he should. And uh, maybe they're making a few more mistakes over the plate. I don't know, but he's not missing the pitches that he can handle, and that's what good hitters have to do. Here's Blue, ball one, and a ball tapped to short. And Andres fires across, two down. Five up, five down for Perez. Twins haven't seen much of Perez. And the one time they saw him to beat him, that was in Arlington, Texas a few years ago. Yeah, 2012, Twins beat him down there five to one. What's impressive about him so far is his confidence of throwing the ball on the inner half of the plate. Bobby Wilson, his catcher, has called for pitches on the inner half to almost every hitter at least once. And you don't see that a lot in the game today. You see guys staying away, away, away. And he'll get his pitches away as long as he stays in her half. There's a strike on the inside corner. And now one and one. Six straight wins for Perez. The last time he lost a ball game, lost a start. It was May 18th at Oakland. Another tapper to short. Andres waits for the third hop. A pair of one, two, three innings for Martin Perez to start his night tonight.
Baseball on Fox Sports North is presented by Northland Ford. Visit NorthlandFord.com and your local Northland Ford dealer today. And by Grand Casino, the best stories start here. What's yours? Beautiful night for baseball. No score on the board yet as we go to the third inning. Bobby Wilson will lead off the third. Shinsu Chu and Desmond will follow. Herman Santana delivers strike one. He had a hard time getting strike one over in the first inning, but a much better job in a one, two, three second. Rangers carry three catchers. Three of them are out of options. Wilson being one of them. Holiday and Chirinos are the others. They have a four man bench. Yeah, it's quite a story with the catchers. Down and away, two and one. Bobby Wilson and Brian Holiday both were catchers for the Tigers. I think Wilson was traded for Holiday. Holiday got hurt, and they somehow got Wilson back from Detroit to fill in his spot because Trinos was also hurt right. at the time. So it was a kind of a crazy deal, but both Wilson and Brian Holiday are kind of uh, utility second backup catchers, but both do a good job defensively, call a good game. Two and two. And foul away. Irvin doing a good job keeping that one down in. Throwing to a guy who used to be uh, a catcher for him when they were with the Angels together years ago. Another 2 2, and now a full count. Santana started the first inning with a leadoff walk to Chu. Gave up the only base hit he's allowed later in the inning. Both foul. Yeah, the leadoff walk, 23 pitch first inning, but only one hit allowed in that half inning, and then a 1 2 3 second inning. So if he can come back here and get Wilson, good start to the third inning. One strikeout for Urban Santana. That was of Desmond on a called third strike with a fastball. Go in here. Try to do the same thing there. I got a weak line drive, pop up, whatever. Great spot. Right Sano there. with the catch, one away. Twins fans, if you can't catch the games on TV, you can stream them live on your mobile device with the all new Fox Sports Go app. Download the app, take Fox Sports North and Twins Baseball with you wherever you go. Shinsu Chu drew the walk in the first inning, but was only able to get as far as second base. One thing we noticed from Santana in the month of June, and an ERA of about five and a half, so. There were a lot of issues. One of them being he didn't get many swing and misses. Pitched nearly 30 innings, had only 14 strikeouts. Well, I think he has really worked on his off speed pitch in the Yankees back to back games, and he did a lot better job of throwing that change up. And I, I don't, you know, sometimes that can make your fastball look that much better, even though the velocity is not. Any higher, the fact that you're throwing them and keeping that in the hitter's mind, fastball gets on you a little quicker. Now fastball over the inside corner to a left handed but batter, one and two. That's something I feel he has to do more of is show inside, and then he can run the ball away from guys. Irvin has always been known his best pitch is a slider. Missed the inside corner with Sano now pulled over on the right side. Of the infield. You can see the lines of the field here from the soccer game that was played while the Twins were on the road. Can't Foul look. tip. And Suzuki can't hang on. Two and two. I just think it's so important, even if it's not the perfect change of if a guy's taking or you, you think it's a fastball. Counter situation to show once in a while early in the game the changeup, put it in that hitter's mind. And he got Chu there on the previous pitch to he was way out in front of that. It wasn't the greatest located changeup, it was a little too high. But at least now Chu's aware that he's gonna throw it. 
And as the game progresses, I think everybody in the dugout will see that. We'll go to the slider now. 52nd pitch of the night. Oof. Just missed the outside corner, and it's another full count. Kurt Suzuki tried to backdoor this one. He called the slider, and then he sets up on the outside corner. And I don't know. Looks to me like there's a part of that baseball in the strikes. And now another foul ball. 53 pitches thrown by Santana and still only seven outs. Another 3 2 count. That's something that he's going to have to try to do a better job of. He had Bobby Wilson to start this inning 3 2, and now the same with Shinsu Chu. Got him. With the fastball over the inside corner, two down. Great location. Commands it on the inner part of the plate. Suzuki sits right there on the corner, and he hit his glove. Umpire Bob Davison standing right over top of it. Two down, and now Ian Desmond called out on strikes his first time up. On the ground, and that'll bleed into center field. A two out single, and Buxton flips it in quickly. A two out single will get Mazzara to the plate. Time now for greater coverage of baseball presented by T Mobile. And you know, we learned last year it's not smart to pick a rookie of the year winner halfway through the season, but what a great first half for Nomar Mazzara. Among the rookies, first or second in the big categories. Well, he's built very athletically. Tall, lanky kid. Probably be a monster someday. But right now, a lot of youth and just agility. On the outside corner, strike one. First. Pretty much giving him a third baseline. Miguel Sano playing pretty much in the hole between normal third base and shortstop. We shift him to the right side. Busted his bat. Back to the mound. Santana with the play. And Santana has three shutout innings. Lowe's home field advantage. Max Kepler enjoys hitting here at Target Field. A couple of home runs, including the big walk off against the Red Sox. Nine RBIs, nine runs scored. And, you know, it'd be logical to assume, I think, Jack, that what he's done at the plate and in right field has helped uh, the decision, tentative though it might be, that Miguel Sano is going to 
come back and play in the infield for a while because right now they got a guy in right who's doing okay. Absolutely. You, you think about earlier in the year they put Sano out there and uh, Kepler came up but wasn't hitting much and they sent Kepler back down Sano had to stay out in right field. And now you know I think everybody understands that Miguel Sano was not originally intended to play outfield. It was kind of an emergency move because all the designated hitters that the Twins have. Two strikes. Kepler takes a ball. But Trevor Plouffe right now his legs are a little bit. I don't know. It, he looks like he's got something in the groin or the hammy or something and so they're going to give him a little rest by DH and without Park here they have that luxury. Swinging strikeout that will bring up Kurt Suzuki. Suzuki finished June with a flourish getting the average up to 279. He's been swinging it very well lately. And that's good for Twins fans to see Kurt Suzuki. Not trying to do anything special with the ball other than seeing it and hitting it hard. Swinging up the bat, putting the barrel on the ball, and he's going to all different fields. And the results have been there for him. Tap foul, one strike. This is an all of baseball right here. Batting average leaders. Third on that list, and some pretty impressive. Jose Altuve had 42 hits in the month of June and 100 at bats. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Even I can figure out that batting average. You know, you and I, we always vote for the player of the month, and the pitcher of the month, the right. rookie of the month. I don't know how you cannot vote for Altuve yeah. after a month like that. He got my vote. The problem I had today as we filled out the ballot is which Cleveland Indian starting <laughs> pitcher to vote for. Yeah. There's Kluber, Salazar, Carrasco, Bauer. What a month the Indians had. And today, in 19 innings, they extended their winning streak to 14 wins in a row. Yeah, the Blue Jays had to pitch two position players. They ran out of pitchers. Darwin Barney ended up giving up a home run. Darwin here. Barney will never forget <laughs> his time on the mound. That is a foul ball. Carlos Santana hit a home run in the top of the 19th inning at the Rogers Center. What was the longest game you ever played in or witness? We'll go witness. Witness, yeah, because obviously I'm not going to play in 19 innings. Right. But uh, I think we had a 21 inning deal in Detroit once. I know I called a, a 19 inning game in Toronto a couple years back. It was five hours and 28 minutes of. Action packed, fun filled evening. <laughs> <laughs> Suzuki called out, two down. And Byron Buxton will hit with the bases empty and two down. Sanford Health injury report. Yet shoulder discomfort. Some scary episodes for Darvish. He is a key guy for the Rangers, as good as they've been this year with 51 wins already. They, they are looking. They're optimistic that they'll get a productive U Darvish in the second half. Here's Buxton. On the ground, a one hopper to Andres. And a perfect first trip through the order for Martin Perez. And we have no score going to the fourth.
Rangers have the best winning percentage in the major leagues since May 15th. All right. You probably had a few things uh, like that happen in and around your career. So um, what can an incident like that do to the clubhouse. Well, I think what it can do and you know in, in some ways I think it's unfortunate but it did start with the guy that got the punch thrown at him and that fact that uh, that bad flip annoyed the heck out of a lot of guys in that dugout Beltre grounds out first pitcher but Odor did himself and his team a lot of good by not backing down I mean, we're talking about one of the stars of the game and when he slid in in a game where nowadays you can't take out a, a second baseman right. or shortstop the rules have changed you're not allowed to do that Batista slides in very hard and he took exception to it and was not afraid he's a street fighter this kid is is uh, you know he's got a little he's got a little mojo going inside him did not back down and I think even though it doesn't appear to be very sportsmanship to a lot of fans I know I've been a part of those things that can bring a team together and uh, Timmy Laudner mentioned in the pregame show a team that fights together wins together that's not always the case but in this case the Texas Rangers have played for whatever reason a lot better baseball since that incident and they went to Oakland and lost three games straight after that day but when they got out of Oakland they started really winning. One strike to fielder and now a ball. Well, you know things are going well when you have something like that happen. And the end result in terms of players and games played, Odor got a lengthy suspension yeah. that he had to serve. And so the Rangers dealt with that by promoting Jurickson Profar. And Profar came up and immediately started hitting and mm -hmm. playing well to the point where Profar who has now become a utility infielder and he's here to stay he's hitting 337 and just under 100 at bats and Profar who knows whether he would have gotten called up if not for the suspension but his initial ticket up here this year ball hit on the ground a couple of hops to Nunez two down his ticket was there I use the term punched <laughs> right when well, Odor and words but Odor yes Odor punched Bautista and started serving his suspension two down in the fourth and now Odor will bat. Well it, it's funny because Odor had a great year against Toronto last year he was a thorn in their side and maybe that's one of the reasons Bautista went after him but he might have picked the wrong guy because the element of surprise uh, I think what it was is Bautista I've I've seen him play I know what he's all about he's a lot more bark than he is bite but he won't back down either and he sticks up he's a prideful guy and he was annoyed that they threw at him even though I think he has to look at some of the tape of his swings to understand why they threw at him and to me the fact that Ordor did not back down even though I think Bautista thought it was just going to be one of those typical baseball brawls where you shove a guy and then after everybody grabs everybody then you can talk big and act silly and you know act like you're going to beat the world the world order door just went after him. one and one and now all strike one and two I'm sure he wasn't thinking about a suspension when he threw that punch one and two from Santana to Odor missed inside. Well Irvin's tried to go inside more than I think I've seen him in a lot of his starts this year. And I think that's a plus. He's using the slider when he's ahead. Gonna go away with a change up here. And got him. good pitch. Swing and a miss. And the third strikeout for Irvin Santana and another one two three inning. And Miguel Sano will hit again in the bottom of the fourth.
one of the things that went right for the Twins in the month of June. They hit 36 home runs. And if I Minnesota high school math is correct, that's on a 200 home run a year plus pace. The pop up right field and Chu comes over toward the line a little bit. One away, Nunez retired. Time for tonight's cold hard facts brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light. The Twins hit just 21 in April, went up to 31 in May, 36 in June. Shorter number of games in July because of the All Star break, but we'll see what happens with the home run total. And then you have the Baltimore Orioles. The Twins hit 36 home runs, feeling pretty good about that, right? The Orioles hit 56. 56 home runs in one month. Well, it's kind of the way the game has evolved. Home runs are a big part of it nowadays. But 56. It's a lot. That's two. A game. Obviously, there's nobody moving their feet over there in Baltimore. <laughs> Mauer lifts it to the left field corner, chased by Mazzara, and he won't get there. That's a foul ball. I'm surprised that the Rangers didn't have Mazzara playing in the corner like most teams do. He was playing a more standard yeah. position and, in and left that, field. That's not an easy corner when you're playing well over toward center field. That corner is a tough one because of the angle out there and it's just a short parallel to the line to the warning track and wall. So you can see where he is way over here. Whoop. And he had a long run. Ball was almost fair. And now he's cheated toward the line a few steps. Mauer takes outside two and one. We've seen Alex Gordon about halfway between where Mazzara is now in the line. Two and one to Mauer. Looking for the first base runner. We, we also saw Oswaldo Arcia with his back against the wall. <laughs> now that might have been the most. I've never seen what I saw that one day. He was almost on the warning track. Three and one to Mauer. Jack mentioned earlier that Perez time to time has some control issues. 41 walks on the year. And now 42. And the Twins will get Perez into the stretch position here with one out in the four. Saturday, July 16th is the championship breakfast celebrating the Twins Hall of Fame. The breakfast will feature a retrospective program featuring 2016 inductees Tory Hunter and John Gordon, as well as other Twins Hall of Fame members, autographs, photos, and more. It's a great event benefiting the Twins Community Fund. It'll be my distinct honor to MC that. And it supports youth baseball and softball throughout Twins territory. For more information to get your tickets, visit twinsbaseball.com slash breakfast. Inside now to Sano. One thing that Martin Perez has been willing to do here early in this ball game is throw inside. And I think that is such a necessary thing for all pitchers to do. Even when you miss, you miss off the plate in. You don't miss out over the plate. He's going back in again. 2 and 0. Oh. He was able to strike out Sano on a slider that was in off the plate. That uh, Sano went down and missed. Odor Wilson to the mound. Talk to Perez. Quick trip to the mound. Again, what uh, has helped mitigate some of these walks that he's issued the 19 ground ball double plays. Pitcher's best friend. So no trying to. And as you've watched this game, he'll throw his breaking ball down in the zone. And he'll throw a sinker down and away. So he's got movement both over the middle of the plate, breaking the outside corner, inside corner, but down. That's what he gets all his ground balls on. So no with a swing and a miss, two and one. And a very good defense in the infield to help him out with that. Got a goal Glover at third base. Elvis Andrews has been very good at short, steady. Odor, good at second base. And a miss, foul tip, I believe, two and two. So no struck out in the first. His 72nd strikeout of the year. He has walked 29 times. Two and two.
Just missed. Full count. Wouldn't expect the Twins to send Bauer here. You notice Sano's reaction. Let's watch that last pitch. He puts the fastball belt high, and Sano looked like he was diving, like that ball was way in. Well, it was an inch off the plate. But that's what a fastball in will do to hitters that are so accustomed to going away, 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 and diving into the ball. Sano taps it foul. And then when he goes away on that sinker right there, Sano does not have that kind of swing where he's going to drive it to the right side. Because he's got to be conscious of the ball in. So that's why it's so important for all young pitchers to know that you've got to go in and out. You have the ability to go up and down in the zone, but in and out is even more important. Full count with one away and Bauer aboard. He missed. So no drawing his 30th walk of this season. Last year, he drew 53. So let's see. Let's do the math then together, Jack. That's 83 walks. And well, this is a little bit tougher, but it's like less than 400 at bats. So I think everyone's assuming that while the strikeouts are there, Sano's also going to be a guy that over a full season that you would expect to draw 100 or more walks. Yep. Back to back walks now here in the fourth, and Dozier to the plate. He'll draw even more if he starts hitting the ball in the seats again. Ryan Dozier, quite a little streak, not only with his extra base hit streak, but 22. Straight at bats where he's been on base or straight games. Dozier takes a fastball on the outside corner, strike one. But Martin Perez digging himself a hole here to start the bottom half of the fourth by walking two guys after a leadoff fly ball to right. One and one. Every out. Except for the three strikeouts and the fly ball from Nunez. Everything else has been beaten into the ground. Nunez grounded out, Mauer grounded out in the first. I check your, uh, beg your pardon, Dozier popped up leading off the second. So four, ground ball out, five. First time through the order. Inside, up around the hands, and it's two and one. Given a scoring opportunity here in the fourth. Bauer at second, Sano at first. Oh, I'm interested to see if Perez will try to throw in on Dozier or go away, stay away. It's like they're setting up away. Popped up into the seats, two and two. Been a good streak for Bryant. And within that streak, he was put into the cleanup spot. Continue to produce with a lot of extra base pop. Well, there's no question that he's been willing to go to the right side of the second base way more often than he did in the first two months. And I think he's also seeing the ball better. He's not missing his pitches near as much, especially here over the last couple weeks. He's been red hot. Towards short, 6-4. Three, the 20th ground ball double play for Perez. He's got four no hit innings.
Target Field inside the Minnesota Lottery Winner's Circle, which means we have $100 worth of scratch-off tickets for Linda Palmasino, part of North Dakota Night here tonight at the ballpark. She just retired yesterday after working 40 years in the student health department at North Dakota. Linda, what was that like to work for 40 years there at UND? Well, we went through a lot of changes, but it was a great place to work and a great place to raise my family. And I consider the people at UND my family. And you've made a lot of family friends <laughs> surrounding you. Everyone wearing a North Dakota hat thinks they're related to you. That's right. <laughs> well, congratulations on retirement. Enjoy the celebration here tonight at the ballpark. Thank you. Dick and Jack, these North Dakota folks are having a good time. They're all over the ballpark. Well, thank you, Marnie. Appreciate that. Congratulations on the retirement. As we start the fifth inning here, Elvis Andres with a 2 1 count. Andres Moreland and Wilson in the fifth. It's to center, Buxton back, slams on the brakes, and then has to reach to pull it down. One down. Join Fox Sports North at the next viewing party, Thursday, July 7th, beginning at 6 30 p.m. at Sunshine Factory in Plymouth. Watch Minnesota take on Texas, enjoy drink specials, register for tickets and prizes and more. Visit FoxSportsNorth.com and click on upcoming events on the Hot Topics bar. One down, here's Mitch Moreland. Santana has given up just the two hits, no runs, and he's starting to pick up some quicker outs. A lot of first pitch strikes help uh, that regard. Well, that's they? just it. His rhythm's getting a little bit better. He's having command both in and out. Uh, he's using all of his pitches, which is good to see. And just allowed the two hits so far. Left the pitch up, a foul back. Yeah, he tried to run that one up. It didn't get up quite enough, but Moreland was able to make an offering at it anyway. The ball was fouled back. Kind of got, a, I think uh, Irvin got away with him there. He probably wanted it to get up a little bit more than that. 75th pitch of the night for Santana. Breaking ball down and in. Are you a big believer in the? Turning of a calendar page now. You know, if you got the same players, what difference could it possibly make? But it, you know, it's a long season. And people break it down different ways: first half, second half. And I think in this case, there is some hope that the Twins will play better baseball because it's not the same team as it was in June. Sano is back. We might see Barrios back before the end of the month. Tap back toward the mound, past the glove of Santana and Sano with a short flip, two down. I think. I think what what's more important in this game is so so much about pitching and the fact that Irvin Santana is coming off pretty good back to back starts against the Yankees he won a game a no decision in his second game Tyler Duffy who's tomorrow's starter the best game he's thrown all year was against the Yankees his last start and Kyle Gibson finally won a game for the twins in his last start so you've got three young guys that are supposed to be part of the answer uh, pitching against the best record team in the American League right now and if they can do well keep the guys in the game while they're out on the mound I think it's a momentum builder that this team is we've been looking for momentum builders all year into the shift again right behind the second base bag this time it's Dozier over to Mauer and Santana sent down a seven man to get a row.
Pepsi fans of the game on a glorious night at this wonderful ballpark. Opening game of a three game series. No score yet. Our team Perez will pitch to Trevor Plouffe, Robbie Grossman, and Max Kepler. Just off the outside corner, ball one. Yeah, it's turning into quite a pitching duel, and you feel like maybe a mistake pitcher here or there is what's going to decide this. Both starters are kind of on point right now. Perez in a bit of a jam because he walked Maurer and Sano consecutively, but he got Dozier to wrap into a double play. He's hit deep to left, but it's going to hook foul one and two. I always get a kick out of fans' reactions when those balls hit down the lines. Foul, but could be home runs. And it's like, as a pitcher, you understand that that was by intent. Swing hard, kid, because this one's going to be really hit hard down the line. But you're not going to be able to put it in play. You can't keep it fair. <laughs> can't keep it fair. It's in enough that you can only put the barrel of the bat on the ball, and it's only going to go foul. Now, you're now I, I want you to ask me who did I have the most success doing that on? Okay. Because you're going to love the answer. It's our radio analyst. Oh, is that Dazzle right? man Danny Gladden. <laughs> He'd get on the plate and he didn't want anything in. He hated that ball in. So he wanted to prove to you that he was going to get the bat out and not be able to, you can't get in on him. Well, he hit everyone foul. And once he had two of those, he had, I had something for him. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. Two and two. The chopper, and we'll see if Ploof can leg this out. Beltre barehand. How did he do that? Safe. Trevor Ploof's legs are not well. He's got a groin problem. And he hustled it down the line and barely beat out a ball that Beltre made a great play on. First hit of the game. Beltre had to barehand this ball, and it it hopped a little bit in his hand. When he picks it up, we're going to see it right there. Well, maybe it didn't. But we've seen him make this play so many times, and it's clear that Trevor did beat it out. Good hustle for Trevor. You're right. He just hasn't been getting down the line very well, but big man's motor and head down. And he beat it out. Uh, and you, you can wonder, see the grimace. Yeah, you wonder how much that hurt him, but he got the first hit now. Now Robbie Grossman. Squaring the bunt, the ball in the dirt, ball one. The Twins understanding here in the fifth inning, no score. One run would be a huge one to get if you can get the first one. And Grossman squared around the bunt. Kepler, obviously a left handed batter on deck, and Perez is really tough on lefties. Field. Grossman squaring to bunt, and that might have brought Beltre in a step or two. And then the next ball grounded just out of his reach. I think you make a great point right there. Beltre has to be in on the grass or right to the edge of the grass when a guy tries to square around a bunt. There's nobody else. They're figuring they're trying to get him into scoring position, so he's in. And this ball just to his left. As you can see where he is right here. He's got a Stay in there to protect against the bunt, and he's got maybe one more step in him if he's five feet back, and he probably gets to that ball. And he'll be in on the grass here, one would think, for Kepler. Kepler struck out on three pitches, swinging in the third. I mentioned Perez is really tough against lefties, entering the game with a 147 opponent batting average. Righties do okay; they hit 288 against him, and left-handers about half of that. Kepler deadens the ball and that's a close play he's out and the twins may challenge Paul Molitor already with a foot out of the dugout. We're going to take another look at it for sure but it looked like Kepler took one of those lunge steps his last step and was caught in the air we're going to see it right here and see Perez gets off the mound he looks the third but no play there. We could not tell there it looked like maybe Kepler beat it. Odor's got his foot on the base. No, he's out. Just a little too high of a leap. His last step, he lunged. 
ball hit the back of the glove when Kepler's foot was about six inches from the bag. But a sacrifice for Kepler, and that'll bring up Suzuki. And the sacrifice will force the Rangers to bring the infield in. Suzuki called out on strikes his first time up. See what Suzuki can get done here. Well, he's a good man to have at the plate right now. He's been putting the ball in play. He can make contact. He can go to all parts of the field. They're going to play him straight up yep. and play him back. Yep. Nubbed up the line, and that is a foul ball. That's right. You wonder how much or how fast Trevor Plouffe can accelerate coming home if there's a shallow fly ball. Will Gene Glenn? Send Trevor. Well, even you know, the contact play, do you put it on with a guy who's yeah. going to have a hard time running? The middle infielders are back at pretty much standard depth. I think Moreland at first base is willing to come home here. There's, you know, other than that, they'd probably still try to turn two. One strike Suzuki to Suzuki. Plate. Squeeze play, and he butted it in the air. It'll be a double play. With Plouffe coming in, Paul Molitor asked for the squeeze, not the safety squeeze, and Suzuki bunted it to Moreland, and there goes the threat. A little things. in Minnesota can you appreciate the rich history and culture of the Ojibwe band at the Mille Lacs Indian Museum and Training Post. Learn how to make moccasins, porcupine jewelry, applique beading and kids craft in classes or watch cooking demonstrations of traditional Ojibwe food. Find endless ideas for the perfect getaway at exploreminnesota.com. Share your favorites with hashtag only in MN. To the sixth, no score. And a pitch down and away to Shinsu Chu. Chu with a walk and a strikeout so far against Irvin Santana. And now a drive foul. The Twins have had two scoring opportunities. The Rangers have really only had one. That came in the first inning. Chu walked out as far as second base on Mazara's single. Irvin Santana's been pretty good. Team with just two hits. Check swing, but he went, and it's one and two. Well, that's a go to pitch for Urban right there, especially to the left hander. Chu, he loves to throw that slider down and in. He really, Chu can't really stay on top of the baseball. He's always swinging over the top of it. 
Foul tips. Suzuki hangs on. And Chu strikes out for the second time. All right, we got you here uh, this weekend, Jack, for uh, your help in our carsoup.com trivia questions. Who holds the Rangers record for multi hit games in a season? They've had some great well, hitters there. They, you're going to have to help me with a, a name. Okay. But he played shortstop for a long time, not too long ago. Michael Young? Michael Young. Okay. That, that's going to be my guess. And that would have been my guess, too, but my goodness, they've had. Going back to Ruben Sierra. Oh, they had some great ones. Al Oliver. On the outside corner, 0 and 2. Toby Hera, they had Buddy Bell. I mean, there was a lot of great hitters there. They've got a lot of hits. Two strikes to Desmond. And in the dirt. You had the joy in Arlington of pitching in that first ballpark. I love that had. first ball. Did you really? Oh man, at night the wind would circle, come in from center field, circle. Actually, it would fly ball right center, fairly deep. Buxton back on the warning track, playing for a bounce. It comes, rounding second, and slamming on the brakes is Desmond, an important decision for Desmond there as he thought about third and will hold up at second instead with a one out double. Well he's got another multi hit game here. That's the second hit of the game a double. Buxton played that as good as he could right there. But Desmond off to the races you know he's watching it for probably too much too much should have been running out of the box. He might have had a chance for three had he been running out of the box. But Buxton holds up, comes off, plays it off the wall, makes an accurate throw. And Ian Desmond has to hold up at second. We'll see if that factors into whether the Rangers score or not. Here's Mazzara. Foul back a strike. Let's watch Ian Desmond out of the box. He's admiring his swing too much. And right about there he starts going. It's usually right around first base if guys start kicking in the gear. Unless your name's Byron Buxton. <laughs> and he gets going right away. One strike to Mazzara. And now two strikes. Mazzara singled in the first, and then he hit a soft comeback or two Santana in the third. The Twins have had back to back innings where they've had scoring opportunities. And since the first inning, the Rangers really haven't had one other than right now. Check swing. Back to your question though about the old ballpark in Arlington. It seemed like at night the wind would blow straight in from center field. And I don't know why the you know back in those days it was just a lower bleacher. There was no upper level at all. Do you remember right. that? Yeah I do. It was pitchers heaven. <laughs> I remember throwing the ball right down the middle and guys crushing balls that should have been hit 500 feet. And it would go up and get into the wind and blow right back to the center fielder. <laughs> you had to know your ballpark. One and two. Now two and two. The new ballpark, Dick, in Arlington. He's got so many levels. I don't think the wind rarely ever has any effect on right. the playing field. It's down so low compared to the jet stream. And now they're going to get a new ballpark, replacing the one they've got. That's going to have a roof on it. Won't be fine with me. Two and two. Won't be ready this next weekend when the <laughs> temperatures are. <laughs> supposed to be 103 yeah, degrees all day. We've got a pretty soft director who wants you to wear golf shirts. So. <laughs> Three and two now to Mazzara. Beltre on deck. Santana got ahead of Mazzara. Now he's in danger of losing it. To Papa. Sano losing it. Nunez with the catch right between Grossman and Sano. Sano ran into foul territory, then had to circle back into fair territory, two away. 
Well, hopefully they were communicating there because if you're Eduardo Nunez who's running full speed, you don't want to run into the wall named Sano. Let's watch it unfold here. You can see Sano has not really pick up the ball, but Nunez had been calling it. You can see Robbie Grossman holding back. He knew that Nunez had called it, so he got out of the way and gave way. Sano almost got in the way, but it all worked out. Two down, and now Beltre. Never know now we're trying to ponder what might have happened had Desmond been at third base. Maybe the twins bring the infield in. Maybe Nunez nor Sano can make that catch. Desmond still at second with two down now, one and zero to Beltre. If you're the third base coach on that play right there, Desmond's at third, you know his speed. We have him tag and go. Ooh. It's going to be a tough yeah. play because the infielder is running away from home. Nunez's got a strong arm. Tough to do that with this guy at the plate. He's been such a great run producer yeah. already with 52 runs batted in. 2 0 to Beltre. A base is open and a left handed hitter, Prince Fielder, on deck. Dribbled and Sano bare hands it. Rifles his throw. What a play! What a play by Miguel Sano. The same play that Beltre nearly made in the bottom of the fifth. Sano made it on Beltre. Well, Beltre gets down the line a little bit better than Trevor Plouffe, but that was a great play, and it's good to see the big man doing that at third base. Third base, and he really enjoys playing there. And he made that play like someone who enjoys being there. What a play in a key spot. And now Buxton takes strike one. You got to wonder what's going through Beltre's mind. He's done that so many times to other players. Inside to Buxton, one on one. Buxton hit a hard one hopper to the shortstop, Andres. First time up. And now two and one. Twins had back to back walks in the fourth, didn't score. Back to back singles in the fifth to start the inning, didn't score. And three straight at bats, there was at least the threat of a bunt. Up the middle, Buxton with a base hit. Buxton the board with. An infield hit. Another look at Sano's play at third base. And you're right, Adrian Beltre's probably done this. Look where he's playing. He's yeah, playing he's, a deep third base. He's got to run a long way. That shows that he's healthy. His legs were underneath him, but to barehand it and then throw a rocket. That's that's impressive. That's 
That's as good as it gets right there. As Sano was in the minor leagues and he kept getting bigger and bigger. People thought, well, you know, probably going to end up first base. And the Twins resolutely said, no, he's got too good of an arm. He's got a great arm in his limited duty there. He's shown the Twins that arm. There's a liner back to the screen with strike. Well, again, the Minnesota Twins get a base runner here. Leadoff base hit by Buxton, number nine hitter. And this guy possesses some great speed. You wonder if maybe Paul tried to get something going here. Nunez is a good hit and run guy. In the bottom of the sixth inning. It's usually when managers maybe get involved in a close game. Foul away, two strikes. Unhappy with about the result of that first pitch, but I think that second pitch is one uh, we've seen him hit with authority to the opposite field. He's got a pretty big hole on the right side with Borland holding on, holding a Buxton on. Yeah, Odora, the second baseman, has to shape towards second base with the speed of Buxton. So there's going to be a good hole on the right side. As a pitcher, when you know that a guy is willing to shoot the ball the other way, this is the time where you do not want to throw a ball away. You want him to maybe pull the ball towards the left side of the infield. Down the middle of strike. Came back like a fastball and cut the plate in half one away. That'll bring up Mauer. MLB.tv Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you've come to expect and more. Watch every out of market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices. Includes a free subscription to AdBat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Hour with a bouncer to second and a walk. Twins with two left handed batters in the starting lineup Bauer and Kepler. Kepler was asked to bunt his last time up. Well, for whatever reason, the Rangers are not playing Joe to shift it to left field. It's pretty much straight up in this situation. But in ball one. And I think that might have something to do with the fact that Martin Perez has shown his willingness to go inside. They're not just throwing him away, 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 where Joe just slapped the ball. To left field. If you pitch him in, he has a tendency to sometimes try to pull the ball, although he has the ability to pull his hands in and shoot the ball to left. But pretty straight away in the infield and the outfield for Joe here. So the Twins with one out are more eager to send Buxton to second base. Six for six stolen base attempts and another throw to first. Well, for as fast as Byron Buxton is, I think he's still learning the whole aspect of base running as far as stealing goes. He hasn't been overly willing to try to steal, and sometimes that has to do with the guy at the plate. Doesn't want to take the bat out of the guy's hands. Now in the middle of strike one and one. But if he's in scoring position for a great contact hitter like Joe Maurer, he's going to score from second pretty easy. Let's look at the pitch selection for Martin Perez this year. You can see 55% fastballs. He's got a two seamer and a four seamer. 16% changeups, and then the other two percentage curveballs and changeups. Assuming he stays healthy, I think Buxton will be one of those guys. We'll see it happen. Number of times in his career, he'll score from first on a single. He's that fast. Oh, yeah. But again, it, you know, Bauer, we talked about it the other day. He has just seven doubles this year, seven home runs, but just seven doubles. He'd have quite a few more doubles if he was playing an outfield defense that was playing him as straight away as the Rangers are. And now three and one. There's a danger of walking 
Bauer for the second time in a row. Well, that's something he will not want to do here with Byron Buxton. It'll put him in that scoring position for Miguel Sano. You would think he's going to attack Joe Mauer here. He walked him already once. And Joe has a great eye at the plate. Everybody knows that. Three and one. And Mauer walks, and now Buxton advances to scoring position. Third inning in a row now. The Twins have had a man in scoring position. Third walk of the game for Perez. Kale, the pitching coach, to the mound. Sano has not put a ball in play. Struck out swinging in the first inning and then drew a walk in the fourth. Mentioned it, Dick. There's another opportunity for Minnesota to get something going here. So no, tends to be a little over anxious in these situations to see if he can just relax and let the ball come to him. Miss the inside corner ball one. Bouncer to third, Beltre to the bag. He'll fire across. Double play. The 21st double play induced by Martin Perez. And another scoring opportunity for the Twins slips through their fingers. Here's our grand casino story of the game. It's been all pitching. Martin Perez and Irvin Santana are matching goose eggs through six innings. Both have four strikeouts. Both have given up three hits. And uh, Irvin's got the edge with only one walk allowed. One strike to fielder leading off the seventh and Odor and Andres. One and one. Swing and a miss. 
miss one and two. Each team with three hits the twins with three pretty good scoring opportunities but nothing to show for it thanks to a couple of big ground ball double plays. Urban Santana with six shutout innings against a really good lineup. And now inside two and two. Suzuki going calling the slider again right there. But Urban doing a good job of making sure that he keeps it down. If he's going to miss he's going to miss out of the strike zone. Fastball in he's going to try to lock him up in. Pounded foul. You look at the Ranger lineup and take a look at uh, the two starting pitchers each with six shutout innings. Yeah, the only real difference is Martin Perez has allowed three walks to Urban's one. Other than that, they've been almost identical. 102nd pitch for Santana. And now three and two. Look at this Ranger lineup, and it has what every organization would love to have balance top to bottom. Well, they say if there is a weakness for the Rangers, it's been their bullpen. Yeah, 51 wins this year, and we're supposed to feel sorry for their bullpen. <laughs> I don't feel sorry <laughs> for them. But talking to the Rangers, yes, people, I know, they're complaining I know. about yeah. their bullpen. We'd have 15 more wins <laughs> if our bullpen just yeah. could have shut the door. Well, yeah, if ifs and buts were peanuts and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. Another 3 2 to Prince Fielder. Odor and Andres will follow. Popped up back and out of play. Not too far from us. You know, you, all right, look at this lineup. Of the, the players in their lineup, you might pick Desmond for the All Star game, right? Well, he's got the best average. Right. Maybe Beltre. What's cool is uh, Odor is leading the team in home runs and bunt singles. <laughs> Santana lost fielder so he's aboard to start the seventh. It's the first time that the Rangers have had their leadoff man on since choose walk to start the ball game. And we'll see if Odor is asked to punt here fielder of course not the fleetest of foot at first. Perez has been able to be the beneficiary of some double plays after walks. Well one strike. What is it about second baseman leading teams in home runs? <laughs> when did that ever become part of the game? <laughs> All right, Presley getting loose in the Twins pen. Hooked foul. Yeah, pretty good one in your years in Detroit. Sure. Lou Whitaker, a home run hitter. Well, you know, again, nobody would have thought that Lou Whitaker could have the kind of power that he did, but he would hit 20 every year. Yeah. Odor needed a new bat. Two strikes from Irvin Santana to Rugnet Odor. Nice stop by Suzuki, keeping fielder at first. Well, he moves Odor's feet right here, comes in with the slider. And a good stop by Kurt Suzuki. Two to Odor. Jacked his swing. And another nice block by Suzuki. <laughs> Sometimes I think umpires are just waiting to be asked. Dale Scott, third base umpire, is just staring in. I don't know if he's wondering why Bob Davison didn't ask him on that one or not, but I have a feeling he was about ready to. Call it a strike. There's a check swing, and Davidson calls him out. 
And I was just going to say the thing that bothers me on that is home plate umpires making the determination. Now, if Suzuki called for a, an appeal on the other pitch, the one before this, but the home plate umpire necessarily doesn't have the best angle to make that call. And it takes three seconds to ask the third base up. But in this case, Davidson rung him up. And Paul Molitor to the mound. I haven't seen a signal yet. Well, he's asking. I think this is a conversation of right man to man. Paul's asking Irvin Santana if he wants to continue. Yeah. Pitch count at 110. That's getting up there. And he wants in. Maybe he can get that double play ball that uh, Perez has been able to receive here in this game. Andres has hit the ball in the air twice. Presley is ready. I would guess that you found uh, you had more latitude as the pitcher when the manager Sparky or whomever came out as you got older. This is a luxury that Tyler Duffy probably wouldn't have been afforded here. Yeah, there's no question. You know, you get a, you build a relationship and they know what you're capable of doing. They they maybe give you the benefit of the doubt. They did more so in our generation than they do today. No right. question about it. But when you can prove that you can get yourself out of messes like this, uh, you know they're more willing to let you have the ball if you want it. One I know to Andres. And now on the outside corner. So when you're out there and the manager, you know, entrust you with an extra out or in your case in the World Series an extra inning, it's incumbent upon you to get the job done. Fox Tracks presented by Carrier. And now a foul ball one and two. Uh, Irvin quickly getting ahead in the count, which is good. He's kept the ball down, which could induce that ground ball that he's looking for. Relief pitchers always scared me. And to me, every time they got up, it was motivation to get going. <laughs> I laugh about it today, but it's honestly got truth. It's the way I looked at it. Down and away. I figure they can work on a different day. Two and two. 114 pitches for Santana. By far a season high. His earlier high was 109. That pitch was under his chin. And Andres nearly stepped right into that pitch and got hit in the face. It's a good thing that he made contact. We'll get another look at it right here. Ball was running in. Was Chest low. eye. I yeah, guess. lower than maybe you had thought, but it might have still hit his elbows had he not made contact. Now look out to Santana. Whoa. Why'd you make the ball do that? Now a fast ball missing, and it's three and two. Irvin showing that he wants to at least show him inside. Pitch count at 116 here, partly due to that very first inning. He threw 24 pitches in the first and 20 in the uh, third inning. So 40, 44 of his. Uh, 116 pitches were in two innings. Just missed the corner and a walk will send Fielder to second base. And now Paul Molitor. Yeah, he gave him one hitter. The change. He gave him one more hitter and Andres battled, battled, and ended up taking a walk. Well, he went to that slider, but it's just out of the zone. And Elvis Sanders does a nice job of not offering it. Pair of walks spelling the end for Santana who pitched a shutout ball into the seventh and now he'll hope that Ryan Presley can get through the eighth and ninth spots in the batting order without allowing the first run of the game.
Ryan Presley in a scoreless game, top of the seventh inning. In recognition of this July 4th weekend, Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with the mission continues empowering veterans who are adjusting to life at home and finding purpose through community impact. Visit FoxSportsSupports.com to learn more. Mitch Moreland, the batter. Ryan Presley has done really well with first batters faced, and he's done really well with inherited runners, and he will hope to improve those numbers here in the seventh inning. Moreland's grounded out twice. Strike of the knees. Well, this is where a starting pitcher can really embrace the guy that can help him. Obviously, good outing for Urban Santana, allowing only three hits through six and a third innings. But two guys on base right now are his responsibility, will be charged to him because of base on balls. So he's going to be hoping that. Presley can maybe spin a double play ball here or get a couple strikeouts. 96 mile per hour fastball, 84 mile per hour breaking ball, and it's quickly 0 and 2. Foul away at 97. We have seen as this first half has played out, month to month it seems, Presley. Picking up more velocity on the fastball. Chicago. I think it's it's just fair to say he's got a very live arm and a healthy arm again. He's got some filthy stuff. When he can throw the ball where he wants to, he can be unhittable. On the ground, past a diving Mauer. Kepler will charge and Fielder will be held at third. A ground ball, and if it was hit at someone, it would have ended the inning, but it didn't. And now the bases are loaded with one out, and Bobby Wilson. Third base coach Spike Owen has no choice but to hold Prince Fielder as he's rounding, coming to third base, trying to round. You see the ball just shooting by a diving Joe Mauer there. And here's Prince Fielder. He kind of hesitates as he's coming into third base. You can see him holding up. And he kind of probably is used to the fact that <laughs> they're not going to sign him at a time. Yeah. Well, the pinch hitter is going to be Jurickson Profa with the bases loaded and one out. And here's where the Rangers carrying three catchers comes in a little handy for yep. them. They're a little freer to substitute. Their catcher because they've got two on the bench instead of one. Good point. Paul Molitor doesn't have that luxury. If the catcher would get injured for any reason, he's got nobody else to catch. So. Strike two. And Presley has Profar where he had Moreland. And Profar has been a great boost for the Rangers this year. 98 at bats and only 18 strikeouts. Oh and two bases loaded and a base hit to center on an 0 2 pitch two runs will score and the Rangers get a big hit and Presley getting ahead of both batters 0 and 2 and giving up two base hits now a fastball that got in on him probably broke the bat but the ball's up and when you have a fairly good swing the ball's up in the zone instead of the ground ball you're hoping for. The result is what it was. You can see he starts with a great fastball down and another running fastball away. And the oh. third one was left up and over the plate. Yeah, I thought that was in more than it was. It did break his bat, but two, not good enough pitch there with two strikes. And I think you could even see in the, from the center field shot, the first two 97 miles per hour with sink. Mm -hmm. And then you elevate it just a little bit and it stays flat. Well, what you do is you try to overthrow it. He tried to throw it 110 miles an hour, and he doesn't have to do that. When your body's out in front, your lower body, lower half is out in front of your arm, you're going to take some velocity off. The ball's going to stay up, and it's going to flatten out. Unfortunately, both those runs now will be charged to Urban Santana. And now Bauer to short, relay to first, safe. One but not two, with Chu beating the relay. On the play, Moreland goes to third.
Two down, two in, and two on. And we'll go back to our carsoup.com trivia question. I got Michael Young. I don't know. Julio right. Franco. Julio Franco, all right. Michael Young. 70 multi hit games. Desmond has two hits already in the ballgame tonight. And over for a strike. Cutter or slider. With five hits, the Twins with three and two very important hits for the Rangers here in this seventh inning against Presley. Check this swing. Desmond turned down a huge contract with the Nationals about a year and a half ago, signed for a fraction of the amount of money. Will be a free agent after this year. Think he'll end up back in Washington? <laughs> Center fielder? Yeah. He uh, has shown uh, that he's a baseball player, kind of what Michael Kadair always professed when he was with the Twins. Worked out a number of different spots in the infield. Every spot in the infield he played, and mm -hmm. then they. Moved him to the outfield, and he just decided he was going to be a baseball player and go out there and play, and blossomed out there. Of course, I remember years ago, and it's uh, terribly premature to make comparisons, but Robin Yount was an MVP as a shortstop, and then he went out, and played center field, mm -hmm. and won an MVP as an outfielder. Desmond isn't that good; he's not Hall of Fame caliber, but he's had a wonderful first year with the Rangers. Presley strikes him out. And that ends the inning. A couple of walks, and then later, after a pitching change, a couple of hits and a couple of runs for the Rangers. Brian Dozier will lead off the bottom of the seventh. Strike to Dozier leading off the seventh inning. He's been pretty awesome for the last week and a half. Have had a chance here in the middle innings to score. 
with two runners on in each of the last three innings but they've not been able to get the hit that the Rangers got in the top of the seventh. Robinson Chirinos doing the catching. And Dozier now with a 1 1 count. He'll be followed by Plouffe and Grossman. Inside, 2 and 1. Perez walked back to back hitters with one out in the fourth. Twins didn't score. Fifth inning started with a pair of singles. Twins didn't score. And then again in the sixth. And in each case, it's been a double play. Two ground ball double plays, and then the Twins in the fifth trying to get that first run. As Suzuki, who dropped down a squeeze bunt, but he popped it up. Matt Bush warming up for the Rangers as the count runs to three and one. Let's see Perez's pitch count much more conservative, efficient than Santana's was at the start of the seventh inning. Three and two. Rat towards third, through for a hit. And Dozier's aboard. His hitting streak extended, and that'll bring up Plouffe representing the tying run. Hey, this top copyrighted telecast is presented by Authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent of the Minnesota Twins. Take a look at that. Pitch that Dozier hit right there. That was a fastball. And that's the pitch I've been talking about with Brian Dozier. That is in his wheelhouse. That's the pitch that he's always hit. And early in the year, that was a pitch that he had trouble making contact with or putting the ball in play. And he drove that through the hole with authority there. I'll take a look at it right now. Ball was left out over the plate, pretty much dead center. And you know a lot of pitchers have been pitching Brian away 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 but when he gets the ball middle of the plate or middle half in he's always been able to pull that ball with authority. One and out of blue. And now a strike. Blue's got the first twins hit. You know. Number in front of Beltre and was able to beat it out barely. Well, Perez has been dodging bullets here for the last four, three and a half, four innings by allowing walks and base runners, being able to get that double play ball. And you wonder how long that can last. Urban Santana, right now, pitcher record for the Twins and kind of a tough way to go into the clubhouse. By allowing two walks that eventually come in the score and really pitched a whale of game, allowing only a couple of hits, three hits. Driven to right field. This ball is deep. This ball is gone. Home run. Trevor Plouffe ties the game with an opposite field home run. Well, there you go. That's just what we were talking about. Can he keep dodging bullets? Allowing that leadoff man on, he finally makes a pitch up over the zone, and Trevor Plouffe doesn't try to pull the ball. He goes the other way with it, and we got our tie game. And I think that's just justice for Urban Santana, who pitched very, very good tonight. Tenth home run allowed by Perez. Seventh home run hit by Plouffe. And now Robbie Grossman rounded a single to left his last time up. Strike on the outside corner. One and one. Getting it done here in the seventh inning. Single followed by a home run. Grossman takes up and away. 90 pitches for Perez, 54 strikes. The hitters count to Grossman. 
three and one. Kepler on deck. We just mentioned Perez has been flirting with danger here for a few innings. And now after a home run to tie the game, getting behind again. And you wonder how far Jeff Bannister might go with him. Liner to Odor, one away. And that'll bring up Kepler. Another look though at Trevor Plouffe's opposite field home run. Fastball up and away, and Trevor just went with it. That's some good hitting right there. Barreling it up. Let the pitch kind of take care of the power. At the top of the line, Stone, and then bounced up into the uh, fencing area. And now Kepler down and in ball one. A sequence of three plate appearances in the fifth inning. The Twins threatened to bunt. Grossman threatened to bunt. That brought in Beltre in a step or two, and then Grossman singled past him. Kepler did drop down a sacrifice bunt, nearly beat it out. And then Suzuki on a squeeze play popped it up. I think that's another thing I'm a little bit surprised with Max Kepler. The more I see him, the more I realize the kind of speed that he has. Yeah. He's a good runner. And, uh, you know, maybe as time goes on, he'll learn the art of bunting a little bit. I, you know, you, you don't want to see a guy with his swing and his ability to maybe drive the ball and become that kind of hitter. Bunting a lot, but when he goes into a little bit of slumps here and there, look what Rod Carew did with his career. Just being able to put the ball down and he never panicked. He never rushed his bunts. He, he never ran out of the box while he was bunting. He'd get the ball down before he'd take off. One and two to Kepler. Breaking ball. Missed inside. Good pitch, two and two. Chirinos was setting away, and he just kind of rushed that with his lower half. The ball stayed in. He's lucky that didn't stay over middle in because Kepler might have had a good whack at it. Popped up, and Chirinos makes the catch near the on deck circle, two down. And that'll bring up Suzuki. Typically, when they've tried squeeze plays, have tried the safety squeeze, which means a runner holds until the ball's put down on the ground. But this was a, a full-out suicide squeeze, and Suzuki popped it up in foul ground. Moreland had to sprint in to make the catch, but Plouffe had already crossed the plate by the time he caught the butted, uh, the popped-up bunt. You're kind of a baseball historian, Buff. Who the heck named it the suicide squeeze? Managers who had happened what just happened to Paul Molitor, I think. <laughs> they probably came up with the term. <laughs> well, if you don't get it down, the ball gets by into the catcher's glove, you're right. Suicidal. <laughs> Popped up and into the seats. 0-2. We had a shutout until the seventh, and the Rangers got a two-run signal. Oh, and the shutout. Twins got a two-run home run. We got a shutout again. It's just that both teams have two. So yeah. starting all over again. Popped up short center. And Desmond comes in. To end the inning, but the inning started with a Dozier single, and then right after that, Trevor Plouffe tied the game with a two-run home run.
I'm Hanneman back with the Mall of America Studio Sports Update. The Twins have jumped into July with a three-game series with the Rangers. Tomorrow afternoon, it's game two with Texas, starting the Twins Live at 12.30. Then at 7, we'll bring you Minnesota Lynx basketball in a battle with the San Antonio Stars at Target Center. Yeah, we're looking forward to another beautiful day here at the ballpark tomorrow. We encourage you to come out if you're not going to be here. Tune us in tomorrow for Twins baseball. A tie game going to the eighth inning. And Taylor Rogers will come in to pitch to the three, four, and five batters for the Rangers, Mazzaro, Beltre, and Fielder. Now well, he's kind of been a go-to guy for Paul Molitor in his 21st game. Perfect record on the mound. And a first pitch strike. He'll face two left handed batters here at Mazzaro and Fielder. And that's where Rodgers has done really well. Lefty's hitting just 188 against him. Right handers uh, hitting well over 300 against him. I tuned into your broadcast, Dick, on the road, and uh, you were talking about Taylor Rodgers and the progression that he's made. And I agree with it. I think uh, he's a guy that. Is better as the season's gone on. He's more serviceable. Paul's going to him more and more. I think he's learning uh, what his role is and how to pitch guys at the major league level. It's a good story within a, a tough year for the Twins. Got a twin brother, of course, Tyler. And Tyler's in the Giants organization. And a few days ago, he got promoted from double A to triple A. So both. Twin Rogers boys might be in the big leagues here shortly. You never know. Once you get to Triple A, anything can happen. There's a beautiful off-speed pitch, and Mazzaro swings and misses. A strikeout to start the eighth. Well, wouldn't it be Taylor's luck that his brother gets called up, and because it's an even year, the Giants go to the World <laughs> Series, and he's yeah. playing postseason baseball. Well, I asked uh, Taylor when the when he and his twin brother were born, who arrived first. And Taylor said, yeah, he, he is the oldest by a few minutes over Tyler. So naturally, I guess it follows that Taylor would get to the big leagues quicker. <laughs> I don't know where. You, you don't think that's well, kind of, there's a connection there? A few minutes? <laughs> <laughs> one and one to Adrian Beltran. Tapper foul. Puts in no doubles defense. That means the outfield's playing very deep. And so no shadow is draped over the baseline. One and two. Rogers to Beltran. Foul away. I think as a young pitcher these are the challenges that you start looking forward to the more experience you get you want to be able to get out the game's better hitters. And so the twins guard the line and Beltre gets a base hit between third and short. And that'll bring up fielder the twins flex plan gives you the flexibility to choose your games in your number of seats. You can choose in advance or even the day of the game. So plan flex plan go to. Twinsbaseball.com slash flex or call 833 twins to learn more. Fielder coaxed a walk from Santana to start the seventh inning and eventually scored on Profire single. Ball one. In the eighth inning, so maybe it's uh, pertinent to point this out. The Rangers are where they are. Because they have an incredible record in one run games. They're 17 and 6 in one run ball games this year. Fielder takes outside 2 0. Well, there was a one run ball game that you and I would not have wanted to be a part of today, that's for sure. <laughs> 19 innings worth? A <laughs> couple of position players get the pitch. 
Cleveland and Toronto Cleveland keeps winning way out in front and fielder trying to hit the ball to St. Paul. He's done that a few times in his career at least tried to. But another good breaking ball from Taylor Rogers. That's the pitch he struck Mazzaro Mazzaro. Oh, no. Two and one. Uh, two and two. Which makes Rogers mix. You know, so far appealing. We just saw 94, 94 miles per hour, point. and we've seen breaking balls in the upper 70s. Well, he's he's almost got two breaking balls. He can throw one that's a little harder than that, which is kind of a plus. But yeah, that's a that's a good break difference between his breaking ball. You don't really have to depend solely on a changeup when you take fastball at the knees at 94 miles per hour. That was just a good sequence of pitches for Taylor. He showed him that slow curve and Fielder with a wild swing and a miss. And then he stares at a fastball in a perfect spot. Two down. Well, it's a tough, tough game, tough business being on that mound, but you can make pitches like that. There's not too many hitters that are going to have success against you. Odor. Ball hits the corner. This ball's high. I'm just thinking of Paul Molitor all the years and the quick little quiet step that he took. Danny Santana, we've talked about. How he just barely uses lose uh, moves his lower half. Odor's got a pretty healthy leg kick, and it's hard to stay on balance when you've lifted your leg that much. Very susceptible to the off-speed pitches. You get that front leg down, and you still keep your weight back, and you still have a chance to drive a ball. One and two. Breaking ball got him. What an inning for Rogers. He struck out all three left handed batters, mixing 94 mile per hour heat with a teasing breaking ball. It's a 2-2 game here at Target Field, and part of the reason that it stayed 2-2 is Taylor Rogers, the way he struck out three left-handed Rangers batters in the top half of this inning. And we invite you to stay with us as soon as the game ends when we bring you Twins Live, presented by CenturyLink. And tonight we'll look at a big home run from Trevor Plouffe. He tied up the game in the bottom of the seventh inning, an opposite field home run. 
plus Urban Santana's six and a third innings. The pitch count was a little high, but overall Santana was pretty effective tonight. And we will hear from the manager, Paul Molitor. It's all coming up after the game. Dick and Jack. All right, thank you, Marty. Byron Buxton to lead off the eighth inning. Matt Bush into the ball game for the Rangers. Touch down and away, ball one. Buxton, ground ball to short, and a single up the middle. Quite a story with Matt Bush and how he got to the big leagues and pitching here for the Texas Rangers. Outside 2 0. Oh. He was signed early in his career as a shortstop, I believe, an infielder. And uh, that didn't work out real good. Found himself in a little bit of trouble out of, out of the game of baseball. And somebody with the Texas Rangers affiliate was doing some work with. Kids that were in trouble, and part of his deal was, hey, let's play catch. And he played catch with Matt Bush and realized what kind of arm he had. So he, uh, the Ranger person, called the scouts and said, hey, this kid, you ought to take a look at him. Well, they went and looked at him and realized that he had played pro ball, but not as a pitcher. And he said, what the heck do we have to lose? So they signed him, brought him to spring training. And invite him to camp uh, as kind of a showcase guy out of the minor league camp, and he just blew everybody away. So lo and behold, he gets called up, gets sent to Double A out of spring training, and uh, they were so desperate for pitchers, they called him up, and here he is. Chop to the right side, and Moreland flips, and Buxton is barely retired at first. Dangerous play, of course, with the. Pitcher covering and the spikes landing on the bag right about where the hand is going to touch, and that was a close play. I've never been a fan of guys sliding into first, head first. You're, it's been proven you can run through the bag quicker. You know, it looks like, from the fans' point of view, you're really hustling and showing you're trying, but the truth is you can run through it faster than you can dive Ooh. through it. But yeah, that's the problem right there. Is you don't want that pitcher to step on you. Let's take another look you. here. Let's take another look. Oh, he. Yeah. That angle definitively showed, I think. Although the Twins are still pondering a challenge here. Nope. nope. Molitor pulls the left leg back into the dugout. One down. And now here's Nunez. Bush coming in for the 23rd time. All the numbers good. Low opponent batting average, just seven walks. Just one home run allowed now in 20 and two thirds innings. And a crisp 98 mile per hour fastball. That's just it. You see the life of his fastball. Pretty free and easy at 98. Swing and a miss. At a cutter, 94. Another story about Matt Bush related to that incident against the Blue Jays where Jose Batista was thrown at. Well, he was the guy that was called in and threw at Batista. And I'm sure it was probably instructed to him. And I hope I don't get myself or anybody else in trouble for admitting that. But either case, he threw at Batista. And uh, I'm sure he's not a fan favorite in Canada right now. Breaking ball, 81 miles nasty. per hour, and a wild swing and a miss, two down. That's just a nasty combination right there. It's not so much the total break there; it's the fact that it's what 20, almost. 20. 20 miles an hour yeah. slower. Mauer 0 for 1 with two walks. Strike on the outside corner. Rangers coming into this series having been walked off twice in the last two games at Yankee Stadium. And they have had nine walk off 
losses this year. And they've only lost 29 games, and yeah. nine of them have been on the road in the home team's last at bat. When you look at the Rangers, they're winning record at home on the road against the East West Central and in inter interleague play. Mauer taps out to short, and if the Twins are going to win tonight, it's going to be a walk off win. Wednesday and Thursday at Yankee Stadium. The uh, Yankees getting two ninth inning home runs, including a walk off from Didi Gregorius. Well, might, might have made the warning track at Target Field. And then yesterday, a really weird one. Oh. So Chirinos, the catcher, didn't handle a pitch that was nearly a strike. Headley comes in to score, and there you have it the ninth. Walk off loss for the best team in the American League. Leading off the ninth. Mistakes are made at all levels. Brandon Kitzler will get the ninth inning. The closer for the Twins in a game where there can not be a save situation for the home team. And he'll face the bottom third of the Ranger lineup. Andres, Orland, and Profond is going to be a Torino. Andres drew a walk. He was the last man Urban Santana faced. And then the next two guys got base hits. And the Rangers had their two runs. On the outside corner a strike. Now we mentioned Rogers has kind of emerged as a reliable reliever for the Twins. So to Kinsler, just his 23rd game. Low opponent batting average, 222. Kinsler has really shown his ability to dot the outside corner, both with his fastball and his breaking ball. Just two walks allowed in his 21 and two thirds innings. Two strikes to Andres. Wow. At 95. We made the comment on the road trip, and I know you were busy doing some Tiger telecast, but I think you'd concur. The Twins' bullpen has gone through a bit of a change, certainly in terms of personnel, mm -hmm. but where look at the movement from Kinsler in a mid 90s fastball, that's the difference. You know, rather than have a J.R. Graham who threw 95, but everything was straight as could be. You know, now there are guys out there who can make the ball move a little bit at 95. Kinsler gets a lot of ground balls and he gets a quick one here. Another sinker right there, a good movement, just what you're talking about. And down. And that'll bring up Chirinos. Well, there's a lot more to pitching than just throwing the ball through a wall. You can throw 100 miles an hour, and I think uh, that was shown by Kurt Suzuki and 
Eduardo Escobar off the Waldis Chapman 102 103 mile an hour fastballs that are turned around yeah. because they're left over the plate and pretty straight. But movement when it within the strike zone and the ability to change speeds and eye levels has always been the art of pitching. Fastball down ball one. Jack you were and are what six three six three yeah. okay. So taller than normal this guy's just six foot tall mm -hmm. and we just saw 96 miles per hour on his fastball. Where's the where's the power come the velocity most of it comes from their legs obviously they have to have the coordination the good arm whip and all those kind of things but you generate so much of your power with your legs and I think it's a mechanical thing even though Brandon Kinsler is only six foot he's got a good downward plane he comes from that three quarter angle but he's releasing the ball downhill he's not one of those guys that stretches out so far that the ball's flat. Ninety four mile per hour fastball buzzing the outside corner. Another thing that makes him so effective is how still his head is through his entire delivery. You talk about hitters having to be able to keep a still head in order to see the ball. Well pitchers are no different. You're not quarterbacks. You're not throwing at a moving target. You're throwing at a stationary glove. In the right center field that'll land in front of Kepler for a two out hit. A little short pop fly between Dozier and Kepler. That'll bring up Chu. Chu has struck out twice, walked, and reached on a fielder's choice. Swing and a strike. One other thing that Rand Kinsler does a very good job of is keeping his front shoulder in. He doesn't have his shoulder flying open very often. See how nice and compact that is. He's driving right towards Kurt Suzuki's glove. And a lot of times pitchers will get in big trouble when they start flying open and they're they land on their heel and start spinning off the ball. He's using all that energy going right towards the ball. 0 oh, 2 to Chu. See, just a simple little leg lift. His head's fairly still. He picks up the target, keeps that shoulder in, drives right towards home plate, and he doesn't really spin off too bad. You can always have a little momentum going towards first base. Mauer will go to the bag. Good inning for Kinsler. And we'll see if the Twins can hand the Rangers their third straight walk on long.
two. It'll be Sano, Dozier, and Plouf. Or maybe Sano will end the game right here. We'll see. Lynch hoping to open this homestand on a high note, taking on the best team in the American League. Well, it'll be a great welcome back, Miguel Sano, wouldn't it? A high fly to center. And Desmond back. <laughs> on the edge of the warning track makes the catch and he almost did it didn't he yeah one away now yeah, I put a charge in the crowd here and now Dozier now here's a guy that probably weighs half as much as Miguel Sano was leading the twins in home runs Brian's had a great couple weeks. And a belt high strike. Dozier singled in the seventh in front of Plouffe's home run. That allowed the Twins to tie the game in the seventh. Popped up and into the seats. On deck. Ones went down one, two, three in the eight against Bush. Rangers outfield playing deep. Then doubles. Dozier strikes out two away. The walk-off hits for the Twins this year. There have been five of them. Oswaldo Arcia got two of them in April. Miguel Sano with a single at the end of April against the Indians. The Twins actually walked off the Indians of back-to-back nights. Dozier's home run against Miami in early June, and then about five days later, Kepler hit his bomb to center field against the Red Sox. So a fifth of the Twins wins have come yes, to be yep. Here's Plouffe. Breaking ball. Strike one. We've got a fastball away from him and hit it to right field just far enough to tie the game. One and one. Fernando Abad warming up. Looks like he'll get the tenth inning if we have a tenth inning. And a two and one. To center and it'll drop for a hit because Desmond's back by the warning track. Plouffe's third straight hit. He's aboard. Twins have bench players Centeno, Escobar, and Santana. We'll see whether they make a pinch running move, and they will with Santana coming off the bench. Well, now Bush will pitch from the stretch for the first time. Tana threat to steal. Grossman will be the batter. This is the manager, Bannister, making a trip to the mound. I think it's important that every once in a while a manager goes out there even though he's not going to make a pitching change. You know sometimes hearing it from a manager versus a pitching coach. Uh, a lot of young pitchers might take it a little more serious or you know they may relax even more knowing that the manager is coming out there and here's what we'd like you to try to do and give them an idea of what the plan of attack is. 
Montana steps off with a healthy lead. Down and away, ball one. Santana, 10 steals in 17 tries. One and zero to Grossman. So Bush with a bit of a slide step. New to the pitching game, but it's a nice little move he has on the mound to try to no, discourage a running game. He's keeping things quite simple. He's got a compact delivery, you know, and repeating your your throwing motion is something that uh, you know that's the art of pitching. Up and away, two and one, close pitch. But just based on how he is delivering the ball to the plate, I would think that would discourage the Twins from even trying. Well, especially at 98 miles an yeah. hour, just a short little step. I mean, that's almost impossible to steal on right there. You're not going to get much of a jump at all. Popped up. Beltran chasing it near the tarp. And if he can't catch it, it can't be caught. <laughs> well, it was in no man's land right there. Right as the wall starts turning back in towards the field. The fielder Nomar Zara was not going to be able to get to it. Beltre did his best. And maybe a 10 year or younger Adrian Beltre <laughs> might have got to it. Twins have some speed at first. They'd like to get Santana's legs moving here. Two and two to Grossman. About as deep a center field as I've seen anybody play where Desmond is playing. Yeah, there's you can no hardly much. see him. <laughs> Not much behind him. If the Twins could somehow get Santana to second base, well then that changes things. Then you can't be as deep, right? You've got to you got to play shorter in case there's a single. Two and two. Ground ball right side. Odor has an easy play, and we've got a tenth inning with the game tied at two. At least one extra inning is presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. 
All season long, Jack Link's beef jerky feed your wild side. Dick Bramer and Jack Morris as we move to the 10th. Ian Desmond, Nomar Mazzara, and Adrian Beltre will face Fernando Abad. Abad came in for the first time in a little more than a week in Chicago. That was a yesterday. And he had some uncharacteristic control issues. A couple of walks, a hit, and a run. Ended up taking a loss in yesterday's game. Desmond, Mazzara, and Beltre. Foots bullpen so far. Presley allowed a couple of inherited runners to score. Then Rogers did a good job in the eighth. Kinsler a good job in the ninth. Let's we'll see if Abad could put a zero up here in the tenth. Desmond. With a couple of hits and two strikeouts. Strike on the outside corner. Abad had not pitched for a while. He'd had some uh, back stiffness. Mm -hmm. and didn't pitch for more than a week. And then he came out and it was clear that he was a little rusty. Yeah, his command wasn't there. He was throwing the ball as hard as we've seen him all year. But when he's on, he's throwing the breaking ball in the off speed pitch. Got the little big lollipop changeup. I think that's to be expected when you just don't get to the hill a lot. Driven to deep right center field. And gone. A home run for Desmond. He doubled off that area of the fence back in the sixth. And this one was three or four rows back, and the Rangers are in front. Well, you've got to be proud of that if you're a hitter to be able to go opposite field with that kind of power. And Desmond, what a start to his year he's having here as a Ranger. See the pitch? Pretty much center cut. Ball's coming into Desmond a little bit, but he barrels it up. And boom, that ball is gone. You can see uh, Suzuki's glove moving. The target was away, and it came over the middle inner part of the plate and hammered for a go ahead home run. And now here is Mazzara. Single and four trips. One and one. Just the second home run allowed by Abad this year. The other one was here to Didi Gregorius. Yep. Another fastball for Gregorius. Two and one. Two and two. Very slow breaking ball, and it's lobbed into left center field. And Buxton has enough time to run under it to make the catch. That had to be the slowest pitch he threw all year long. Well, there's a pretty elite list right there. Players with a 300 plus batting average, 10 plus home runs, and 10 stolen bases. El Tuve, what a month he had. Mike Trout, we're kind of used to him, but there's a guy in the middle, Eduardo Nunez, yeah. who has had a great year for the Twins, and Ian Desmond, who we just saw have the lead or go ahead home run on that list also. El Trey chops one to short. Nunez sets. Over to Maurer, two down. Now the Twins will need to score in the bottom of the tenth. They'll have the bottom third of their lineup. Kepler, Suzuki, and Buxton. With Centeno and Escobar available on the bench. Fielder, the batter. 0 for 3 with a walk.
The Rangers have right hander Sam Dyson up and throwing. And I imagine he will get the bottom half of the 10th inning. Leading the team with 16 saves. He was on the mound when Gregorius hit that home run. Fouled one on one. I don't know if you heard the call. You probably didn't hear the call from the Yankees broadcast. But I, I thought it was so cool. Yes, indeedy. As Gregorius oh, okay. hit the home run. All right. That would have been John Sterling. John Sterling, yeah. The rest of it you've probably heard before, but <laughs> that was the best part of it. Down and in, and it's two and one. In the first day in, the Rangers had that 20 minute delay to start the game, and then within the game in the ninth inning, three hours and something, and they ended up wrapping the game up about 2 30 in the morning. Won the ball game, mm -hmm. but. Wow, what a tough way to start a road trip. Two and two to Fielder. The Rangers had had good success here at Target Field. I think I saw they were nine and five coming into tonight's play since Target Field. The Twins will see a lot of the Rangers with three here this weekend and four in Texas next weekend. Just missed the outside corner. That's a full count to Fielder. And the breaking ball off the plate. Fielder draws his second walk. And that'll bring up Odo. Odor struck out three times in a row. Taylor Rogers really carved him up with a mix of mid 90s fastballs and a slow breaking ball. That wrapped up the eighth inning. Hit hard to center. Buxton Jeez. back. Now over, leaping and making the catch and crashing into the fence. Great catch by Buxton. To end the inning, but Ian Desmond hit one that he couldn't catch. And the Rangers take a 3 2 lead. The most recent walk-off win for the Twins was Max Kepler's home run on a Sunday afternoon that got the final uh, game of the uh, Boston series in the Twins win column. And he crushed that ball straight away center field. Pretty happy young man right there. I think his teammates were just as happy for him. And 
Kepler will lead off the tenth with the Rangers up a run. Suzuki and Buxton will follow. And Sam Dyson, the closer for the Texas Rangers, at least right now, he's got 16 saves. Sean Tollison also has 11, but Tollison's numbers uh, haven't been very good as of late. And so Kepler to try to at least get a board here to start the bottom of the 10. There's a looper to left and a base hit. Kepler's aboard. And the tying run is on. Suzuki the batter. We'll be back tomorrow afternoon. What's next brought to you by CenturyLink. Tyler Duffy says he's got some things figured out. And he will start for the Twins against Chichi Gonzalez. And Duffy coming off probably his best start in the major leagues. In New York, pitched a great ball game. That was the game that the Twins supported him with six different Twins hitters hitting home runs. So what Suzuki can do here with Kepler at first and nobody out. Squaring the bunt. And a strike. Suzuki, of course, back in the fifth inning in a scoreless game. Has to drop down a suicide squeeze, and he popped up instead into a double play. It almost looked like Kurt never saw that pitch right there. I, I've seen him take bunting practice almost every day. In batting practice, he'll try to square up and lay down some bunts, and he's pretty darn good at it. But it just didn't even seem like he saw that pitch or that one. Well, now he's on too. You got to get ready quicker. He's not. Squaring around quick enough. It's like he's trying to punch that ball to the right side in Moreland, but don't be afraid to square around if that's what you're supposed to do. Get ready. See what he can get done now, trying to dig out of an 0 2 hole. Just a couple of steals and two tries, but I didn't think the stolen base would be the play here. Swing and a miss, and Suzuki strikes out on three pitches. Two strikes given away on bunt attempts. One down, and now Buxton. Have made the great catch to get the Twins off the field in the top of this inning. Yeah, he had a leadoff hit in the bottom of the sixth inning. Swing and a miss. Buxton a little more aggressive. I think that's a good sign for Paul Molitor and Tom Bernanski. A couple times here today, tonight, he's swung at the first pitch rather than take, take, and then you're behind 01 or 02. One strike. Two strikes on a 95 mile per hour fastball. That ball out of the zone ran back down and in. Good sinking fastball from Dyson. Off the plate, but the Buxton just couldn't lay off it. And if he throws that again, there's a good a chance that Buxton will try to swing again. Oh and two. On the outside corner at 96. Wow. So after Kepler's single, Dyson's got two strikeouts on six pitches. And now last hole for the Twins, Eduardo Nunez. Well, what a third pitch after coming down and in with a sinker. He just absolutely dots the outside corner with 96. And that just freezes Byron Buxton. Pitcher's pitch right there. And a whole bunch of pitchers wish they had 96. Nunez 0 for 4. He struck out his last two times up.
Chopper to second. And the Rangers win another one run ball game. They are 18 and 6 in games decided by one run. And they win the opener 3 2 in extras. They somehow figure out a way, and I think that's the sign of a great team. They just never give up, and uh, to win that many one run games, pretty impressive. The Rangers figured out a way here again tonight. Anthony LaPanta got, got a good start from Irvin Santana, and the bullpen gave up the only run that the bullpens would allow, and it ended up being a one run loss for the Twins. Another night where the Rangers find a way to win a ball game. Minnesota comes up short by a run. We'll show you how Trevor Plouffe provided the offense. We'll preview Tyler Duffy starting here from Palma Auto next on Twins Live.